Welcome back to another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. After the massive success of Elden Ring, a big question on everyone's mind was, what the hell comes next? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the answer that I would have never guessed. A return to the series that originally put From on the map, Armored Core. These games go all the way back to PlayStation 1, and they never really reviewed that well, at least from my recollection, but they managed to attract a really dedicated fan base who held out hope we'd eventually get a new entry. It's been 10 full years since the last Armored Core, and in that time, From Software has gone from a relatively small developer making weird games with limited appeal to a major pillar of the game's industry. But if you are coming into this one as someone who's only played the Souls games, you may be in for a rude awakening. Armored Core is about as far from those games as you can get while still being an action title. It's a mission-based mech game where you earn cash to buy parts and upgrade your mech, or Armored Core as they're called in the series. You go on sorties, get paid, and you keep doing it. There's no open world, no hub, Everything you do in between missions is menu-based, and while certain missions are longer than others, the exploration aspect usually found in their games is just not present here. And that's not a negative, at least in my opinion, but it's very different from their usual output from the last decade. I do want to note that these are games I've always enjoyed. I didn't play the most recent one, but I did play them back in the mid-2000s, and these are games that, although, like I said, they don't review particularly great, I think that they're for a certain type of person, and I am that type of person. They're very video gamey video games, as you could probably expect by the description I've given so far, but there's one more thing you gotta know to make these games make sense. like because you're thinking of mechs, and that means you're probably thinking of slow, lumbering tanks on legs, a la a Metal Gear, or Mech Warrior, or whatever. It's that, I mean, it's half right. I mean, in terms of shape and utility, they're very much like the type of mech you would expect, but unlike a Mech Warrior mech, these things can be fast as hell. If you build your AC right, you're gonna be zipping around the battlefield at ludicrous speeds, bombarding everything that moves with gunfire and close-range weapons. Imagine Mech Warrior crossed with Gundam, but with a style all its own. There is a large amount I want to cover today, but I think it's appropriate to start with a story because it really sets the tone for the entire experience. Armored Core 6 The Fires of Rubicon has a story that is opaque even by From Software standards. You get a few lines about something called the Fires of Ibis, you got a handler named Walter, your augmented human C4621, and you land on this planet called Rubicon 6 for reasons vague ones. The opening cutscene is only a minute or two, but it sets a pretty impersonal and sterile tone for the story almost immediately. You never see anything outside your AC, the story's almost told entirely through dialogue boxes with emblems instead of faces, and they throw you into the middle of this science fiction corporate conflict with almost zero context going on. It is extremely disorienting at first, but it is by design, I think. Now, just because something is by design doesn't mean that's automatically good, and I do think that the understated presentation of the story may throw some people off, but I also think it's very effective. You're just a cog in the machine. You're getting bossed around by a bunch of interchangeable corporations who can act as your enemies in one mission and your allies in another. Eventually, the actual story about the hunt for a powerful substance called Coral comes into focus, and that's the direction the game goes in, but don't go into this one expecting a a lot of dramatic twists and turns or characters to root for even. It's not that kind of game. I mean, Dark Souls and ancillary titles never are either, but just in case, it's not that kind of story. And it is even a little sparse for From. But I'll say this, how can you not root for a guy named Invincible Rummy, the drunk AC pilot who thinks he's like a demigod who can't die? I'll say, there is personality in this game. It can be pretty goofy sometimes. But that's not where you're looking for the real meat. The real meat's in the gameplay, and it is excellent. You start off with a basic AC with a machine gun in one hand, a laser sword in the other, and a rocket launcher on the shoulder. All in all, you can have up to four weapons firing at one time, two for each shoulder, two for each hand. And there is a ton of variation that comes from this. There's pistols, rifles, shotguns, more exotic stuff like laser pistols and weird energy weapons like a laser whip. 
And it's not just weapons, you can customize the AC itself, swapping out the head, body, arms, legs, uh, pretty much everything, along with internal parts like the booster, the generator, the FCS, the targeting system. But you can't just slap whatever parts you want on it. There's a limit to weight and energy, and if you exceed them, you're back to the drawing board. There is a lot of depth to the customization here. Uh, it doesn't take long before the game starts throwing weapons and parts at you at a rate that you're not going to be able to keep up with. Uh, it's just too much stuff, and all of it drastically affects how your AC is going to perform. You can make nimble but fragile close-range fighters, rolling tanks covered in rocket launchers, a laser weapons platform. There's just a million different ways to build. And as long as you play to your AC strengths, it'll usually work out okay. It, sometimes it doesn't, but usually it will. That said, Armored Core 6 can be pretty hard. Uh, it's probably something you expected, again, from software. But I want to make it clear that the game looks and plays so astoundingly different from your average Souls-like, while still throwing some really challenging boss fights at you. I mean, I struggled with the first boss, this big attack helicopter guy. Um, I struggled with it for a while, too, and a lot of it's just getting used to the controls, but also this guy's a pain in the ass. It's probably not possible to understate how important it is to understand the controls, though. The most important thing to know about Armored Core is that you always need to be moving. They start you off walking around, uh, like a slow standard mech even before introducing the boost and once you turn that on for the first time you're never gonna walk anywhere there's a standard boost which is a quick boost basically the game's version of a dodge and then there's the assault boost which rockets you forward at high speeds and it uses up a lot of energy so at any given time you're juggling four different weapons and your EN energy gauge and you have to be on top of all of it especially energy because if you run out at the wrong time you are dead it sometimes feels like you need two sets of eyes to keep track of everything on screen especially during the more hectic battles but there's a certain rhythm to the gameplay that just comes natural after a while it can be a really challenging game but there are also some concessions to modern audiences for one you get three repair charges per mission which can sometimes be replenished by supply stations that appear halfway or perhaps before bosses longer missions also have multiple checkpoints and if you die you automatically get your repair charges refilled you also get the option of changing out your ac's build so if you hit a brick wall at a certain boss you can swap out parts and see if that helps and sometimes this feature can really be a godsend there is an early boss that just goes absolutely nuts firing missiles huge pain in the ass but if you have a weapon that's capable of breaking through his shield he becomes a much much easier boss uh, there's another boss that comes after which is this giant moving oven that attacks you uh, mostly close range it's extremely damaging if it hits you but if you swap in some quad legs you can spend most of the fight hovering out of range and and that's that right at the start of the game uh it does shower you with bosses just one after another and they're all pretty great funny enough the one that ended up giving me the biggest problem was this random guy who wasn't really a boss just an ac that i was not built for dealing with there's a mission where you have to deal with these guys who turn invisible and snipe you and my mech was slow and mostly had close range weapons uh, which is the worst combination to have for something like that i tried to just muscle it through but i really should have just switched to something more effective lesson learned but it's really the ability to completely swap out your build mid-mission that makes this game so much more forgiving than the other games. I don't just mean the other Armored Core games, I mean other From games. Uh, even though the actual difficulty level here is kind of the same. Another forgiving thing is that, shockingly, there's some pretty decent tutorials that explain everything, like how different mech types work, basic gameplay functions. They're short, they're informative, and actually pretty helpful. That's not to say there's nothing that's poorly explained, but yeah, for a From game, it's unexpected. The most confusing part is probably the FCS thing. Targeting is done automatically depending on your FCS chip, which can specialize in different things. Uh, some make your lock-on work better at short range, others at medium, others improve your accuracy with certain weapons like missiles, etc, etc. There's also a hard lock-on. You can do kind of a soul style camera sticks to the enemy type thing, and it normally works just fine, but it can be a little finicky. But let me say just what makes this all work is how viscerally satisfying it feels. Close range weapons and heavy cannons feel extremely powerful to use whether it's just chumpy enemy fodder or a gigantic boss uh, and the combat is fluid responsive and really fun enemy acs are always entertaining to take on particularly in the arena which unlocks shortly after starting the game here you take on a series of fights against enemy pilots and it's a great place to test out builds if you'd rather not waste time in the testing chamber the arena is also where you unlock ost chips which are used to unlock permanent upgrades in the os tuning menu you can unlock stuff like new abilities incremental damage upgrades and more stuff like that it's 
totally optional, but it's a fun feature nonetheless. And some of the new features are pretty interestingly integrated, like being able to carry extra guns on your back or the ability to start a mission with an overloaded AC. The variety of missions is really impressive as well. They really do mix things up a lot on this game. Some missions are only a few minutes long. Others are much longer. Sometimes you have allies. Sometimes you have to deal with snipers or stealth units who are waiting ambush. Other times you're up in the Cyclopean grid that dominates the skyline and, and you're exploring tight corridors and fighting around bottomless pits. The world design, if you haven't noticed by now, and I'm sure you have looking at this footage, is so good in this game. It's got a sort of muted beauty to it. It's set in a desolate, war-torn world with the ruins of a futuristic civilization as the backdrop. And I guess I'd say with a lot of other developers that end up just looking pretty samey after a while, but these levels are just constantly keeping things fresh, both in mission design and in art direction. Music too, maybe a little bit quiet, but it's a standout. It's probably an atmospheric decision to have the sound overwhelm it, but there's these really good tracks that are sinister and moody as hell. Unless you crank up the music volume, you're probably not going to really notice it. And with From Games, I tend to notice the music after I go back and listen to it intentionally. But the music in this game, it actually caught my attention from the beginning. If you're into more atmospheric or synth-heavy compositions, turn the volume up on the music. It's seriously so good. And really, just the all-around package. It's great. I played it on PC. Uh, I can't really speak to console performance, but it ran really well on my end. I had everything cranked up to max. I experienced no real frame rate drops, except at the very start of the game after using the very first catapult. But beyond that, no bugs except a hard crash in the middle of a mission during a cutscene, which isn't great, but it only happened once. So it left me wondering if it was really the game's fault, even. I don't know, it's weird. Sometimes I get that kind of a crash and it only happens a single time during the entire experience. I'm like, did something else mess it up? I don't know, maybe that's just me. I would be interested in other people's experience is obviously hit the comments for that. Overall, I want to say that Armored Core 6 really feels like a throwback to a different era in a great way. Uh, it's a game focused on one thing, awesome mech combat, and it does it so well. The sparse presentation may not beg you to immediately become immersed in it, but I don't know, there's a quiet confidence in that that you just don't see in games. Uh, from they're veteran developers at this point, and it's just nice to see them continually not turn into that. They continually elevate what they do, and even though this is kind of a out of left field release from them in terms of the regularly iterative approach that they have taken to their sort of souls formula, From just shows off a gravitas that I feel like kind of specifically happens when you've been around forever. This is a game full of fun missions, fantastic bosses, and that's it. There's like some other minor things you can do, but it's basically just blowing away enemies and it's fantastic. It's not an epic like Elden Ring, so I mean, don't expect a hundred hour monster hunting gloom fest or anything, but there's been a lot of that this year and a solid 20 hour experience that just blows you away the whole time. It just, oof, it's great. I'm not gonna call it from his best storytelling or anything, but it's not trying to be that either. So that's not the best criticism. My main caution to a new player might be the disorienting opening, but I don't know. I, I kind of feel like people are just gonna be drawn into this one. It might even feel a bit too short, depending on who's playing it. I found it to be perfect. And that may be a, a kind of extreme sounding description of it. I'm not necessarily saying it's the perfect game. No game will ever be better. I am saying this is exactly what Armored Core 6 should be. It's extremely cool. If you're a mech fan or even just an action game fan, it's absolutely worth your time. It's tough, it, but it is satisfying, and I don't know what else to say about it. So that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.